Oh, hello and welcome everybody to our next lecture and our guests will be Simonetta Vadioli from Italy and Professor <clears throat> Alessandra Calan uh, Calandici uh, from the University uh, of Urba Urbino in Italy. And they want to talk about a Marchen literary project, Mission 1 2021, unveiling a parallel. The stage is yours. Thank you. Hi, everybody. And uh, this is the first time for me on Mars. Uh, so I thank you for hosting me. We are uh, having, uh, uh, Alessandra is uh, having connection uh, issues. Uh, so I, I, I will uh, present her uh, presentation uh, myself uh, without uh, her presenting it. And uh, I, I'm sorry, but I will uh, read it. Uh. Um, so we are collaborating in a project we want to share with you. A Mars exploration involves many different issues, among which humanities are not a priority if compared to economy, biology, engineering, ecology. In our opinion, however, the human heritage made of cultures, literatures, and art out to provide a robust basis for what we might call a mi migration and settlement, uh, not only of the bodies, but of the mind. In a future, which is not so far, cities will be built, schools and museum will be organized, and we must be ready for this to happen. Our generation will probably not be there. And I think it is crucial now to let the younger generations have a multifaceted knowledge of the history of the representations of planet Mars, also including literary and filmic storytelling. Many younger people are familiar with disaster movies, fictional alien invasions, and imaginary wars between Martians and terrestrials. On the contrary, a very different and almost unknown literary production exists, which portrays the red planet as a utopian world inhabited by smart people who have been able to build a much better civilization than ourselves and offer to be our guide. It is a world full of flowers, gardens, and cities. Here you can uh, see some uh, examples of uh, this uh, Sarah Weiss uh, romance. Some quotations below the line of snows, laden forests of grand trees, many of whose might trunks excelled in girth the Washingtonia gigantea of air whose lofty tops seemed anxious to mingle with the heavens and whose foliage was redolent with sweet perfume. Beautiful valleys nestled at the feet of mountain peaks, filled with quaint homes and surrounded by delightful parks and lawns, beds of flowers and maple trees, elms, beaches, oaks and pines, birches and hemlocks, and other hardy trees. In this city, here on Mars, right in the center of the place, are roses of every hue, damask, red, white, and cloth of gold, petunias, myrtles, oleanders, dahlias, jessamines, and other flowers. Martian utopias obviously date back to before Mariner 4, 6, 7, and 9. Only in the 1960s and 1970s, the first photographs came showing that there was no vegetation at all on Mars. In American literature, several examples exist of these amazing narratives dating back to a period between 1890 and 1910 and ranging from a scientific approach to pure psychism. Rediscovering these narratives today can be a great stimulus both for readers and researchers 
as well as an opportunity for a serious common reflection on the extremely modern ideas expressed by their authors about sustainable economy, gender equality, and environmental care. It is our intention to propose and analyze one or two novels every year for some years to come. Their titles and beautiful covers are the following. And uh, uh, from uh, this slide on, uh, you can uh, see the covers of uh, the novels uh, Alessandra wanted to present uh, for uh, this, this year and for the next uh, one uh, on uh, the Mars uh, Convention, Mars Society Convention. Uh, so we can see The Man from Mars by William Simpson, Messages from Mars by the aid of the telescope plant, Unveiling a Parallel, a romance by two women of the West, written by Alice Ilgen Fritz Jones and Ella Merchant in 1893. And this is uh, the, the book I translated and uh, the, the book I'm going to talk uh, tonight. Here again uh, are other books, A City Less Than Country Less World, they break the story of an old world. Edison's Conquest of Mars. To Mars with Tesla or the mystery of the hidden world. The certainty of a future life in Mars being the posthumous paper of Bradford Torrey Todd. Journeys to the planet Mars. Gitten and Gulliver Jones, his vacation and this one is a romance of Mars. The Lunarian Professor and uh, his uh, remarkable revelation concerning the Earth, the Moon and Mars. The Man from Mars or Service for Service's Sake. Through Space to Mars or the Longer Journey on Record. Ralph 124 C 41 plus a Roman of the year 2660. Here's the cover of uh, To Mars via the Moon, an astronomical story by Mark Witt. And then the most famous uh, book by Percival Lowell, Mars, Mars and its canals, and Mars is the habit of life. According to Lowell, Mars had been inhabited, there was or had, had been water on it, and Earth was on the verge of beginning its own decline to a Mars-like desiccation. He, the man, has enslaved all that he could. He is busy exterminating the rest. Already, man has begun to leave his mark on his globe in deforestation, in canalization, in communication. And this is what Percival Lowell wrote in 1908. Here you can see the covers of the three novels by Percival Lowell. This is uh, Mars and uh, its uh, mystery by Edward Morse. Uh, this is the project, uh, Alessandra's uh, project. We intend uh, to start today with Unveiling a Parallel by Alice Ilgen Fritz Jones and Ella Merchant. The first American novel entirely set on Mars published by two women of the West, Iowa, to be precise, in 1893. Uh, this book has been translated into Italian for the first time this year by, by me. Uh, I think it was uh, the first uh, uh, translation from uh, the English in uh, all the world. 
I stop uh, here the presentation of uh, Alessandra and I should uh, put uh, on my presentation. I hope uh, you can still hear me. Yes, we can still hear you. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I'm yes. just checking for <laughs> the new, my file. Okay. I share the screen again. Okay. Can, can you see the presentation? Perfectly, perfectly. Uh, thank you. So we are talking about unveiling a parallel, as I already said, written in 1893. It is uh, the story of a young uh, New Yorker who goes uh, to Mars uh, at the end of the 19th century. And uh, in the Red Planet, uh, he meets uh, people from uh, different uh, nations. Uh, the aspect, the Martian, I mean, is uh, uh, human-like, but uh, the difference from the Earth is that they develop a perfect society. That's why we are talking of it as a utopian novel. Also, it is a proto-feminist uh, fiction um, because uh, uh, on uh, Mars, uh, on the Mars described by the two women of the West, uh, there are uh, no gender issues. And uh, as we have already stated, uh, it is entirely set uh, on Mars. Here uh, you can find uh, the first edition of uh, the book. Um, in uh, the website of the Project uh, Gutenberg. So if uh, you are interested, and I hope so, in reading it, uh, you can uh, just uh, follow the, the link at the bottom of uh, the slide. So we are talking about fantasy or reality. Novelists often imagine the world, the technologies, and society which didn't exist at the time they wrote their stories or novels. Sometimes their fictional stories and settings anticipated the future that later became a reality. Alice Jones and Ella Merchant described Mars and a form of living on the red planet that we could use as a suggestion in our dream and project to start a humane, and uh, I want to underline, I wish to underline humane brand new world on the red planet uh, one day. Mars, imagined by our women of the West uh, as the uh, luxuriant vegetation we see on uh, the novel, they, they describe the lakes, uh, rivers, uh, trees, uh, flowers, and everything. And also the climate is very similar to that uh, on the earth. Uh, there is no rain, uh, storms, and so on. Its inhabitants, uh, as a difference, enjoy a utopian existence in every aspect of their life, uh, because uh, their life uh, in uh, personal, familiar, professional side, and in social relations is very happy, very successful and fulfilling. Now we know that the red planet needs to be terraformed. There is no green and blue paradise waiting for us, but we can take the opportunity to recreate that humane society Alice and Ella described in 1893. So what uh, was uh, one uh, cent one and more century ago could be a reality. The um, society uh, described by Ellis and Ella was uh, very complex and many topics were talked about were developed uh, in uh, the novel. We just uh, um, chose uh, three among them because uh, we consider them fundamental for living in a caring so society. And uh, we think that uh, from this uh, very basic point, uh, we can uh, take uh, inspiration for uh, a new world on Mars. The three points are uh, 
sustainable development and growth, equality of rights and well-being and personal development. As for the first point, sustainable development and growth, the Martian world depicted in the novel is highly technological. It is a very wealthy country and uh, there is a very economically developed country, but also it is very advanced from a social and ecological point of view. The nation of Caspia, which is uh, the nation visited by our uh, New Yorker, is very, very rich. Everybody is employed according to their abilities and inclination. And this is a very important point because uh, uh, over there, all the people work uh, with care and responsibilities for themselves, the other people and the environment. And uh, since they had uh, uh, chosen their uh, job, uh, as for their inclinations, uh, they made uh, their job, uh, their work uh, with uh, pleasure. The common welfare is uh, at the base of economy and development because uh, no place uh, was left uh, to breed uh, exploitation or pollution of the environment. The second point, is the equality of rights. The material comfort of this imagined society is the result of a commonly shared belief in equality of rights for every person, every individual, no matter gender, class, job, education. In our future life on Mars, like in Caspia, the perfect nation, we trust to be again no gender issues, religious, ethnic issues, but an unconditional respect for any living being. And with them, we we intend to mention not only a men and women, the humankind, but also animals and plants. And uh, we want to underline a particular care and attention in passing the fundamental values to the next uh, generation. In, uh, we can say that education in this case is uh, the point also connected to the last uh, topic, which is well-being and personal development. The crucial importance of teaching and bringing up children with respect for their person and taking into account their character and peculiarities is stressed in this visionary novel. A livable and prosperous society is composed of fulfilled individuals. So we should pay attention to arts, education, as I have already said, a gratifying job, a peaceful community, attention and care. The care, the word care is very important uh, because uh, we need care for body and mind, both of them. Uh, because uh, all these things are essential in a society where people aim to become better and actively help others. The great visions of past literary works are tales of wisdom left to us because we are women and men of the future eager for a new start on the planet Mars. Thank you. Thank you, Simonetta, for this nice lecture. Um, <clears throat> this is a topic what uh, interests me too, uh, because I'm an artist and uh, I'm dedicated to space art too. And um, it's interesting uh, to see your point of view uh, from the art point of view. And it is right uh, that uh, artists uh, have been engaged all the time with uh, planets, with Mars, with the moon, and Scaparelli, con, uh, his canali, and um, yeah. also um, Jack Williamson uh, published the novel uh, Olition Orbit in 1942 under the pseudonym Will Stewart. 
and it, in it he formulated uh, the idea of a global remodeling of planets by humans and used the term terraforming uh, for the first time. And today, uh, mm -hmm. today this termini terminus technicus is in general use and by no means only for the reshaping of Mars and Venus. So uh, you can see how art can influence uh, science. Uh, this is a topic what interests me too. And yeah, very interesting. And uh, I would like to ask the audience if there are more questions, uh, please put it in the chat if you have some questions. But maybe you will add something. We have some time left. Yeah. Because I, I'm sorry, Alessandra, I had this connection yeah. issue and uh, I, I, I couldn't uh, present uh, her part uh, as I should uh, have made it. I'm, I'm quite um, sure it would have been yeah. very, very interesting and I'm really <laughs> grateful that you have taken over her part. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> We need to learn improvise. <laughs> yeah, no. sometimes, uh, yeah. Yeah, you want to add something, oh. Ed? Yeah. Simonetta? Yeah. You want yeah. to add something, Ed, to your lecture or to um, the topic? No, because uh, no, really, I, 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 I think I spoke enough about the novel I translated and uh, focused on the basic point. I mean, I just, like uh, you said before, it is very important, this uh, chain and the little, um, I don't know how to say it, but uh, um, it uh, should be very important and uh, useful uh, that uh, science, scientists and uh, artists, let's say like poet, poets or uh, others or something, work uh, together and uh, see things together because uh, someone imagines something and uh, the other make it uh, a reality and uh, and uh, like the on, on, on the contrary so instead of uh, that uh, um, shaping and uh, building walls uh, between uh, uh, each uh, sector of uh, work and life, uh, we should uh, work uh, together, especially because we have uh, the, this dream to go to Mars and uh, to start uh, a new and, and better kind of uh, mankind, uh, civilization, uh, society and environment. Yes, I think uh, you are absolutely right. Uh, Derek uh, has a question. Uh, he's saying, um, is educational standards to be assessed uh, by a school bank learning text or EQ or AQ type standard also? also sorry. Uh, you say equal regardless of educational attainment. Well, how do you, we get to that point? Could you repeat, please, the question? Because I didn't get the first part. Mm, yeah. I'm, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. Maybe no, I can no read it on the chat? No. Yeah, you can read it in the chat. Then ah, okay. Maybe it's better. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, um, I'm sorry, but I don't know what is uh, EQ or AQ type standards. Maybe it's a kind of school uh, we don't have it, or I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Derek, I, maybe you can clarify this up, what uh, EQ and AQ is. What does it mean? I hope you know it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, emotional quotient, quotient oh, and uh, okay yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wanted to, to, to say this too yeah about uh, autistic quotient oh. yeah oh I, 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 I'm not uh, a teacher and uh, or an educator I'm just uh, a translator <laughs> or reader 
but I, I think it's important uh, from a also sociological point of view to take care and teach, uh, especially um, little children and so on during uh, the school, every grade of school, the, the emotional empathy and uh, everything about uh, this, about uh, the, the society and living uh, together. Uh, because uh, I think only in this way we can uh, we can uh, understand uh, this uh, dream to make uh, a, a new society. And furthermore, it is like this: the <clears throat> uh, the artists can uh, touch the emotional side and um, can reach uh, the audience or. So, yeah, the audience uh, uh, over the emotional part and the scientists uh, can give the uh, rational explanation for some points. Right? Okay, are there any other questions from the audience? If not, I would close the lecture and I would like to say thank you to Simonetta and also uh, to Alessandra because uh, <laughs> she, I, she gave yeah. her a slice and, uh, slices and um, okay. so her presentation and she wants to talk but uh, she had really technical problems and she yeah. was frozen and uh, entered and left. But thank you, Simonetta, for um, huh. giving the lecture and for yeah. joining us, and also to the audience for joining us. And uh, I wish you a nice for evening. Your help. Yeah, Good thank evening. you. Bye, <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye.